Okay, so this is an introductory video to my uh, Betaflight 3.5 series for micros, and I'm going to be tuning up Betaflight 3.5 on these micros that you see in this video here. Uh, this is the uh, Diatone GT R90, the GT M2, the M2.5, the HDLRC Hornet 120, Kep RC Phoenix 2.5, and the Diatone GT M3. Uh, I probably will do a couple more bigger models uh, in a separate video, like uh, probably the Diatone uh, GTR 540. Um, and I'm not going to be doing any of the micros that have the F3 boards on them because a lot of the features in Betaflight 3.5 are disabled in the firmware for those F3 boards. So those would be the Mini Fight, the uh, Emacs Babyhawk R, any of those with the older F3 chip. Now there's a way you can put an alternate firmware in there that has certain features enabled, another one that's disabled because basically the flash size is too big for that chip and it doesn't fit. But Basically, I'm not going to do those models because uh, it's just a lot of extra work and um, there's newer models coming out and all of them will have F4 chips and uh, it's just easier to just, it's a lot less work to tune up those that already have the F4 chip in there versus trying to figure out what works and doesn't work for a particular model on a particular firmware. Uh, obviously, you could take some of the things that you find in these videos that um, I do um, in terms of my tuning and little little tweaks I make and apply that to, uh, say, like the Babyhawk R, for example. Those those things will probably translate pretty well and it might, it might actually work out okay, but I'm not going to be doing those specific models. I'm going to start off with these here. Now, these are the ones are with the F4s, of course, that are, I think, the most popular out there right now. Obviously, there's a lot of other ones out there. I mean, I've done hundreds of these micros, and I'm not going to tune them all. Um, if there's something that someone out there, if you guys really desperately want something tuned on 3.5, leave me a comment below, and I'll keep a tally of uh, what those models are and how many people are interested in that, because, I mean, there might be something out there that I missed that's super popular. I don't think that there is, but, again, if you think that there's something I missed that I should be tuning up with an F4 on 3.5, uh, let me know in the comments below, and I'll consider that for the future. But I'm going to start off with these. I'm going to have individual videos for each of these because obviously the settings are going to be different. I'm going to have a little bit of a discussion as to what things that I changed and didn't change. And basically, uh, the reason I've been holding off on 3.5 is because uh, I was worried about what happened with 3.4. I killed uh, some um, motors on some of my micros on 3.4 due to overheating. And those kind of dangers are still there in 3.5. So what I mean is if you're not careful about uh, your motor temps, you can, even with these tunes that I'm going to give you, you can still fry a motor. So, uh, you know, they, what they've, I think what they've done, my, my, my theory is, and I'm not going to share on this, is that they've changed the way the filtering works in 3.5 versus the older versions, uh, 3.3 and older. They've basically taken a lot of the safety features and turned them off so that you're, if you're not careful, you are more likely to burn up a motor versus if you're on 3.3, an older version, uh, they have certain safety features in there, basically more filtering, so that even if you fly around with a bent prop or a broken prop or with really bad equipment, you're, you should be okay in those older versions because the motors will get really warm, but they're not going to totally fry. But now in these newer versions, even with a good pit tune, because of the way the filtering works, if you fly around with a bent prop, you know, for a long amount of time or even a short amount of time, or a broken prop, you could easily burn up a motor because of the way the filtering works. So I think that's the biggest difference going from the older versions to 3.5 is you got to be more careful. And even with the tunes that I'm going to give you, I highly recommend and that you have some sort of a thermometer or a digital thermometer, one of those little laser thermometers, to check the motor temps to make sure that you're not having any issues because even with these tunes I'm going to give you, you may have some sort of an issue that uh, is causing the motor, you know, motor noise to go in uh, from the flight controller to the motors and heat them up and you may still fry a motor. So, you know, I'm just cautioning you that this is not foolproof and just because it's a good tune doesn't mean that you can't burn up a motor because there might be something wrong with your particular setup that might be causing your motor to heat up that is different from my setup. So what I've done here is I've actually, for all the tunes, I made sure I had brand new props on, 
make sure that the setups are clean so there's nothing uh, preventing the flight controller from you know from like moving or if there's vibration dampening make sure the vibration dampening is working make sure there's nothing touching the gyro stuff like that just you know common sense stuff you gotta make sure that your setup is clean because you know um, I noticed that even yeah, if you one of the problems I noticed from people were having with burned up motors is they were using it on sort of like uh, not top end equipment um, the setups weren't that clean, uh, there was no vibration dampening anywhere and so there's a lot of noise going into the motors and then they were frying their motors because of that. So that's 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 the thing here, so fly these, fly the tunes around for a little bit, you know maybe 30 seconds to a minute, land and then grab the motor with your finger. If you can't hold on to the motor for more than three seconds straight, if you have to let go that means the motor's too hot and you have to, you can't use this tune. So just keep that in mind. And usually because you have a bent prop or something is something's wrong with your craft and that's that's what's causing the vibrations, that's what's causing the gyro to send noise to the motor and cause your motor to heat up. So those are the things I'm gonna caution you about before I get into the actual little I'm gonna go to the computer now and I'm gonna give you the little details. Um, I basically start off with sort of a baseline setup for all the micros. Like you know, in terms of like the basic um, the basic method of tuning the P, I, and D is pretty much the same as before. So I'm not going to go into detail on every little thing I changed and why I changed it like I did in previous tunes. So if you want to kind of get an idea of the methodology that I'm using, that methodology hasn't changed. I have a whole bunch of other PID tuning videos for some of these models, even like the, two, the M2.5 and the M3 that I've done before. That's going to be the same for P, I, and D. Now for 3.5, with all these new features, I've added a bunch of, uh, basically a baseline setup. And it has to do with like the new features like the feed forward and the eye term rotation. I've turned a lot of those things on. And one of the things that they, they did in the, in the baseline configuration for, for the default configuration for 3.5 is all the notch filters are turned off by default and, all, and the dynamic filter is turned on by default. And there's a default sort of notch filter quality. There's some certain things in there that are in there by default. And it's based on the sort of the, the quality of your craft, how clean it is. And the more dirty it is, the more noisy it is, you have to alter those settings. I'm not going to go into those details. I'm going to put those links to the articles that you should definitely read and understand what those are. That's going to be the basically the Beta, the beta Flight 3.4 and 3.5 tuning guides. This is the basis for what I used for my, my baseline setup for these micros going from a 2 to 3 inches for this kind of setup. And, you know, for a lot of 5-inch ones, you can just flash Betaflight 3.5 and go fly on the defaults, and usually it'll just fly fine. But I'm finding that uh, for the micros, I had to tweak it so that it would work better for these higher KV motors and smaller props. It's basically a totally different setup for a 5-inch. So Anyway, I'll go to the computer now, and I'll show you all the uh, baseline changes I made for all the models. And then there's going to be individual videos for each model here with sort of specific changes I made. Obviously the PIDs are going to be a little bit different for each one. And that's what you guys are really interested in. But you, you really have to watch this Nessence Next segment here and make sure you put those settings in correctly on the computer in, base, uh, in Betaflight Configurator. Otherwise the PIDs aren't really going to work out that well for you. So another thing is, the last thing I want to, I want to say is that... Uh, this, these tunes are to my preferences. I kind of to, kind of tune to, you know, I, I don't really like um, really twitchy quads. I like nice smooth line quads. Uh, so that's to my preference. So if you like more twitchy, more responsive, then you might not like these tunes. So I'm just saying this is the perfect tune for everybody. This is the perfect tune for me. Uh, I like the way these turned out. And if you don't like them, well, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I'll, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot I can do about that because I can't, I can't make a tune for every person out there and all their particular preferences. So uh, you can obviously use these tunes as a starting point and then make some adjustments from there to your liking. Because a lot of the new features in Beta Flight 3.5 are more like mm, has more to do with feel than performance. Because the PIDs will, you know, uh, they're they're going to target things like oscillations and vibrations. So those are the things I'm mostly going to get rid of. I'm going to get rid of the bad stuff. But in terms of the feel, you know, 
feed forward and the set point weight transition for example and the older versions uh, there's different ways that they're doing it now in 3.5 those have to do with more of how the stick feels to you how the how responsive the quad feels to you in, in making your inputs so those kind of things you're going to have to probably tweak to your liking because I've tweaked those to the way I like it. So if you don't like that, I'm sorry, uh, you're going to have to make your adjustments based on the tuning guides. Links in the description. Uh, please read those and then you'll have a better understanding of what you need to change in the tunes if you don't particularly like them. Okay, so here are the changes that I'm going to be making as a baseline for all of the, the tunes for the micros in this series. Uh, when you flash uh, 3.5 for the first time, these are the defaults that come in here, and I'm going to uh, alter these because I'm, I'm just kind of tweaking these a little bit so that uh, I don't have to do this for every single one of these um, micros. Uh, first off, I, I fly reverse props for everything now, so I make sure that my, my motors are reversed so they're spinning the other way, and you want to make sure that you also change the ESC direction either by Resoldering the wires or going into uh, BLL Suite and reversing the motor direction if you're going to use this. Otherwise, uh, this won't work for you. So just keep that in mind. If your motor direction is the other way and you hit this, you're <laughs> going to be in trouble. So make sure that they're consistent and they match up. And the uh, ESC motor features, I will select the shot 600. If I have a 32 BDC, then I will select the shot 1200. But I don't think anything in this series. It is a 32 bit ESC yet. And we'll go down here. I will enable uh, 8K for the PID loop. So I'll be running 8K, 8K for everything. And um, for you guys that are not running self level or angle mode, uh, just go ahead and turn the accelerometer off. I don't fly angle mode. Uh, so I always turn the accelerometer off. So these tunes are going to be based on flying acro. And if you want to tune based on flying in angle mode. I'm sorry, I don't fly angle mode, so I can't help you. And I'm just going to go ahead and put in your craft name here. Uh, I'm going to leave that blank for now. Uh, receiver, nothing special here. That's going to be normal. Uh, obviously, you want to change your receiver to whatever you've got there. If you've got a fly sky receiver, you want to alter that to, to iBus. And then under this section here, other features, I'm only thing I'm going to turn on here is air mode. If you are running LED strip or telemetry or some other feature here, then obviously you want to do that for your own build, but none of my builds are going to be using those features. I, I am going to be using OSD, anti-gravity, and the dynamic filter. And the dynamic filter is turned on by default in 3.5 because the notch, the actual regular notch filters are turned off. So the dynamic filter is turned on and the notch filters are turned off. I'll show you the notch filters here in a little bit. And I usually turn on this for the beacon if I don't have a buzzer, and I'll leave all the rest alone, and then we're good. Okay, so under PID tuning here, uh, generally I'll just start off with the out-of-the-box, um, whatever these PIDs are here. I, because these are micros, I, I want a little bit more feed forward, because the 60 is really for like a 5-inch. So I'll start off at 80 for all of mine, and then I'll adjust this up or down depending on how the tuning goes and then uh, in here I usually just fly a super rate of 0.75 so you want to put in whatever rates you fly in here this is what I usually fly I don't usually fly with an expo either and then over here under pit controller settings there's this thing called feed forward transition uh, you can look a little question mark here as to what it means basically to me at zero it's kind of twitchy um, I heard that racers like it at zero. Uh, they want all, like really good uh, fine control, but I don't like it that twitchy, so I usually bump it up a little bit. So I usually will put this up to about 0.3. And if you go above one, then things get kind of weird. So I, I would stick below one if you are using this feature. Otherwise, just leave it at zero in the default if you don't know what's going on. Um, this is just a lot of this stuff is kind of for feel. Uh, I don't use Acro Trainer, so I don't know. I have no idea what this is all about, so uh, I'm gonna leave that alone. So throttle boost is at five by default, but so what this does is if you put the cursor over the question mark, it allows the uh, throttle to be temporarily boosted. It kind of anticipates your acceleration, and it'll actually boost it up so that it feels like you have more torque in the motors when you really don't. So this is kind of useful for micros. So I usually bump this up to about eight or uh, eight or nine so I'll start off with eight 
And then absolute control, this is also another feature that has kind of like, I'm not sure if I'll use it or not. Sometimes I will, sometimes I, I won't. Um, but right now, for, the, for, for starting off uh, on, a, on a normal tune, I won't use it. So if you're more interested in that, you can read the, uh, the Beautiful Wiki and also the tuning guide for 3, 4, and 3, 5. That'll explain more about what that is. But that's something that uh, probably a little bit too much tweaking. And there's actually there's way too much stuff here to tweak, so I'm going to leave that alone. And then for all this stuff here, I term rotation, VBAT, PID compensation. I actually turn all this stuff on. And I usually will do, use go with the defaults here. And also with anti-gravity mode, I leave that default on smooth and five. Sometimes if you have a lot of drifting around, you want to bump that up. And then under TPA, I usually bump this up to 0.25 for micros. So that's all the changes that I'll make in this section to start off with for the two to three inch micros. And then, so I'm going to save this. We'll go into the filter settings here. So as I mentioned before, the dynamic filter is on by default now, and all of these notch filters here are, are off by default. So this is kind of the, I think what they're doing with 3.5 now is they're giving you a lot more control, a lot more features. And so when you have a lot more stuff to tweak, you can make mistakes. And so uh, that's, I think, what's going on with a lot of the burned out motors is People are not uh, paying attention to their motor temperatures and they're not adjusting these filters. So these filters here are designed for five inch quads with very nice setups, you know, top end motors, very smooth, clean frames, no bent props, like basically a brand new setup. And micros tend to be more noisy, so you may need to be adjusting these values down. Um, the only, the only way I'll know it, if you need to do that, or not, if you if you if you check, is if you land and check your motor temperatures. So if you if these filters here, the defaults are too high, you'll get hot motors, and that's what's 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 going on is people just keep flying. They think oh the fly is great, and they don't pay attention to the motors because uh, the motors can still get hot even though you can't hear anything, you can't feel anything in the flight uh, because there's just a little bit of noise that the flight controller is sending over. So uh, a lot of people fly mini packs and then end up burning a motor up because their filters are set too high. So you want to, when we're doing our tuning here, we want to uh, fly for like 30 seconds a minute, you know, and see how, what the temperatures are like. And then if it gets too hot, we want to lower these values. So usually if, it, if it's too hot, I'll usually lower gyro low pass or the D trim low pass of this one here. Yeah, so usually bumping it down to like 90, and if it's still hot, they'll bump it up to 80. So you want to take little steps there, and then you want to also maybe bump, bump these down as well, the low pass 2 on both of these. And since the dynamic filter is on, I usually leave these off. If you have both of them on, then you get a lot of a lot of extra latency. Now, if you turn them on, and it's a little bit safer, probably. I mean, less chance of you running a motor out, but it's easier to just leave these off and then check your temperatures and adjust these here these values here and um, adjust them down if temperatures are too hot. If they're not, then, then you should be fine. You don't need to do that. Now, the, another thing you want to check for is if you crash and bend a prop and keep flying, um, you probably want to bring it back quick because you can burn out a motor with these settings because it's not expecting uh, the motor, and the, the motor, you know, basically the flight controller isn't expecting the prop to be bent, so you're going to get a lot of vibrations and that motor is going to heat up really quick with these settings. So. That's probably another thing that's going on here is people are flying around with probably, you know, not a good setup, you know, bent props, something like that. Uh, something, something's wrong with their setup and maybe they crash and they keep flying and then they end up burning a motor out. And that's because uh, there's, I guess, you know, basically they, uh, Beta Flight 3.5 has kind of taken off the training wheels and they've given you more, more control over stuff, assuming you know what you're doing, but apparently the word's not quite out yet as to what is going on with these filters and that's how I think what's going on with the burn, burned up motors is, is this, uh, people aren't paying attention to the temperatures and are not adjusting their filter values here and that's what's going on. So again, you know, fly for a little bit, check your temperatures, land, check your temperatures, and adjust if you need, if you need to. Okay, so then 
One last section here under the receiver section that I always turn on is here under RC smoothing. I usually turn on filter and then I leave all these as the defaults. That seems to help a lot. Seems to make things a lot easier for tuning. And of course, here, you know, you want to adjust your, you know, high stick and low stick and all that here uh, according to whatever your radio is. I always check your bands, uh, so check your channel mapping, make sure that they're going the right direction. That's just basic stuff that has nothing to do with tuning. Just basic um, beautiful setup, but that's not really part of this video. So that's pretty much it for the uh, basic uh, setup that I put onto all of these micros. And then at this point, I basically just try and adjust things like uh, basically, obviously the P PIDs, and then uh, I'll just maybe things like throttle boost if I need a little bit more um, acceleration or responsiveness, or I'll adjust uh, feed forward if I need more responsiveness. Uh, just you know, it's all a feel thing at this point. I mean, you, I, I'm going to mo mostly focus on the PIDs because that has to do with uh, whether or not uh, you get uh, oscillations or whether it feels too loose or too too. Um, not very predictable. I, you know, I want sort of a uh, fairly sharp feeling flight, but not too sharp. You know, of course, you can always tweak that to your liking. Because at that point, it's kind of a feel thing. But you just want, I just want to get the pids to a point where it's flying well. You don't have hot motors, and um, you don't have a whole lot of prop wash oscillation. And that's pretty much it. So it shouldn't be too hard. I think uh, we'll start off with the defaults on all these models and then we'll in the, in the actual tuning videos themselves you'll see the adjustments i make and you can adjust those for your model and your prop whatever you whatever equipment you've got